I can hear you, Michael. Happy birthday. I can hear you, Michael. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm here. Yeah, I can, yeah. I, I can hear you too. So can uh, I. Yes, we awesome. can hear you. Okay, so let's start over again. First of all, um, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, tonight is an auspicious night. Tonight is in the next, I think, uh, probably about 10 minutes from now. It actually is up. It starts in about 10 minutes. To be up, ladies and gentlemen, um, is about to take effect, which means there's a, a, a massive amount of divine energy that is about to be flowing down uh, into the world today, um, which is very special. Um, we're not here to talk about tonight so much about Tu Be'av. I'll leave that for tomorrow when I have an opportunity. I'll chime in online on Facebook, discuss it a little bit more in detail. Uh, but for me personally, uh, being born on this day, of course, it's a very happy day. There's a lot of bound, a bountiful shefa and energy that's going to be flowing down. But for me personally, tonight is my Hebrew birthday, but tonight is also my 40th birthday. And being 40 <laughs> is, a, is a very big deal. Uh, because uh, the, the actual number 40 um, has a lot of ramifications um, and from many different levels. And again, I'm not here to, to talk about this tonight specifically. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. Um, what I'm going to do right now, though, just sorry, I have to do this. I'm going to mute everybody, and then you guys can chime in when we get a chance. Here we go. So... You know, 40 is, an, is a big number, and spiritually, it's a big number, and, and it's an opportunity to really, uh, as we're kind of learning with chapter 15, and we're about to finish it right now, we all want that Orhaga news. We all want that hidden light, and um, it says really when, you're, when you turn 40s, when you're even allowed to really, so to speak, learn the Zohar, learn the hidden secrets of the Torah on that level, and so I just want to thank Hashem, first of all, uh, publicly, and I will do it privately, and you'll see how that also relates to the next chapter we're going to talk about. But um, basically, I just want to thank Hashem, first of all, for the opportunity uh, to make it to 40, number one. Um, number two, just to have the opportunity to be able to, to inspire and teach as many people as I can, the little bit of Torah that I do know, um, and anything I can do to put a flame in someone's heart and their soul to get closer to Hashem. I'm just so thankful for that and the opportunity for all, everything that I God has been given on to me. Um, so, and of course, being, having this chut in the merit to be connected to Rabbi Nuzal, Rabbi Nachman ben Fega, Rabbi, the, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Um, and again, that's a, that's been a huge firecracker for me. That's completely changed my life, uh, over the last, uh, four or five years. And so I'm so thankful for that. And, and even, of course, even higher level than that, to say that I'm even learning this Torah or just even giving it a shot and trying to teach the Torah um, I, I, there's no words to say how grateful I am to Hashem for this opportunity um, to, be, to be able to do this. So I just wanted to say that, first of all, to start off tonight's class. And I thank all of you guys uh, that are here tonight, whether you're in the Zoom room tonight or you're going to be watching this on Facebook or YouTube later on, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, I, I thank all of you. Uh, I look at this like uh, we're building a Likute Moharan community. And uh, that is something that is very special. It's not something that you see uh, at all throughout the world, but Bezrat Hashem, uh, step by step, if everybody keeps spreading the good word, if you're affected by it, and it's, it's making a, an, an impression in your soul, keep spreading the love, keep spreading Rabbeinu's Torah, and uh, Bezrat Hashem, this will keep growing and growing and growing uh, until Mashiach comes, which should be really immediately. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Uh, second thing I want to say is that... Um, Today being uh, in the next couple of minutes, once Tu Be'av hits the ring, at the end of the class, it is my birthday, but I really do want to give everybody a personal bracha. Uh, when a person's birthday is, uh, is, is, it's a person's birthday, you have the capabilities of giving a bracha. And um, that combined with the fact that it's Tu Be'av and it's a happy day, it's a joyous day, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to get one. So I, you know, the, the forum is open for anybody who wants to stay till the end. And Bezat uh, Hashem, I can give you all a private blessing in public, really, right? But um, you can call me afterwards, whatever you want. It's fine. So uh, that's number two. Um, and number three is um, I want to uh, tonight dedicate to tonight's classes. First of all, for every single person, single person, literally single, that needs to get married, Hashem should really, really give you a tremendous amount of da'a to know who the person you want to marry is right away. And he should present it to you as soon as possible. Hashem should make it really, really easy for you. For those that are really struggling 
and having a rough time with that, Hashem should just open up the doors for all of you. Um, uh, from anybody that's here, anybody that will watch us later on in the world, just say a big amen. And um, Hashem should really bless you guys. Should be a lot of, lot of weddings, Bezrat Hashem, this year, whether it's on Zoom or not. I don't care. I'm just saying. But uh, um, that's uh, number one. Number two, uh, it's always uh, bittersweet. Uh, my mom passed away over now a year and a couple months ago. It's my birthday. So it's always difficult uh, to know that she's not here. But uh, Bezrat Hashem, the Torah that we're learning tonight should be in memory of my mom, Deborah Fega, but Shmuel, Zichonola, Bracha. She have a massive Aliyah and Shemaim. She's probably watching right now on the big screen upstairs, along with a big, uh, also to my father-in-law, Menachem Mendel, Ben Elchanan, who the Lighthouse Project was started his name for Rufua. Uh, he's uh, nearing the one year anniversary as well. His uh, Neshama should have a massive Aliyah and Shemaim. And um, anybody else who, uh, like I said, if you'd like to get a, a Bracha, Afterwards, I'm feel free to we'll jump in, and the Torah should also mechazik everybody to lift those prayers up as high as possible. So um, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is like this: we were almost finished with chapter 15, which should be a big yeshar koyach to everybody who's watching uh, this right now because it was a pretty amazing, amazing uh, chapter talking about the Or Haganus, talking about the light, the hidden light, the light that was gonna is gonna be revealed to us when Mashiach comes. Rabbi Nachman talks about the idea that you can tap into this light. You can receive the secrets of Hashem. We spoke about the idea of elevating your fear, elevating your fear to the Bina, to this one of the, the top spherot. And by elevating your fear, we have to do that through judging yourself. And judging yourself means that a person needs to, literally, doing by doing heed bodidut, by doing personal prayer, a person needs to judge themselves. When you judge yourself below, you will not be judged above. And um, with doing all these specific things, what happens? The revealed Torah is shown to you. And by doing revealed Torah with extra prayer, what happens? Then you finally have an opportunity to start getting the hidden secrets. We spoke about the hidden secrets are revealed to you when a person can somehow, some way, get rid of all materialism, all materialism that a person has on them and just pray for the spiritual. And we know it's not easy. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I still try my best, you know, and once in a while when I'm tapping into my Hebrew to do sessions to just go all in on spiritual. But of course, we're human beings and we also need physical, right? But this is where Rabbi Nachman does. He tries to suck out the most out of you spiritually. He wants you to go all in to the best of your ability and capabilities. And so um, the idea of getting rid of all materialism, focusing on spirituality, going all in, we spoke about the idea of the rea nichoach of Hashem, a fragrance aroma to Hashem. Hashem, so to speak, turns into a feminine, and we are now the male. We are the givers by us doing Hibodadud, by us praying, um, and, and all this. Hashem envelops us, surrounds us, and that surrounding is really done by Him revealing to us all the hidden secrets, secrets of the Torah. And that's what inspires us. That's what lifts us up and gets us really, really, really close to Hashem. So we spoke about that through different contexts and psukim and different and the story of Rabbi Babar Khana. We spoke about the idea of the five possessions uh, that um, Hashem um, Hashem gave to the world. Then he then he also spoke about the idea of a pasuk about being a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We spoke about that. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey, but uh, we are finally now at the end. It's really one little part. And then we're going to jump into the main, main chapter that we're going to learn tonight that I'm telling you right now, please, 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 you got to stick around for that because it's very important, very important. And it's going to change your life. So if we now tap in here for those that are actually now Looking online, what we're going to do is we're going to pop you in right here to the main screen. We are now finishing up the last section, which is here, 15.8. So hold on, let me get you guys right on the right spot where you need to be. Hold on a second, guys. Okay. So the last section that we are on, for those that actually have the book, I mean, one second, let me pop open here. Oh, 
Okay, we're here. We are now in 15.8, okay? And we're gonna just try to, as Rabbi Nachman does so well, and for those that are jumping in, it's your first time learning, please don't stress out that you don't understand it. It's part of the process. And again, you're jumping into the bottom of the ninth inning in a really long story. The biggest goal is for you to hang on tight so we can get on to the next chapter. So Rabbi Nachman finished up the last section and he says, Zot HaTorah Shayach Al Pasuk. The lesson applies to the following verse. He's going to give you a verse and he's going to break down the verse to you and show you how that's all connected to so far everything that we've been learning. Enai Benemne Eretz. The Pasuk starts off by saying, my eyes are upon the faithful of the earth. Enai, my eyes. What does that represent? This is the aspect of Da'at. Da'at we spoke about is a concept of knowledge, awareness, having that knowledge of Hashem. As it says in the book of Genesis and Breshit, and the eyes of both of them were open. Now we know from that puzzle, that's when uh, they realized, uh-oh, we ate from the tree of knowledge and now we know what's going on. We're naked. Oh my God, we got to cover up. Now, here, if you guys look at note 73, it says, my eyes alludes to the concept of holy knowledge. Why? Because when, a, when they opened up their eyes, so to speak, they had an awareness, an awareness of da'at. Gan da'at chem eser shmot havaya, gematria shnei pa'aim ayin k'yadua. Now, it also says the actual word da'at, if you look at the gematria, Da'at is 260. So it says here that that is 10 times the holy name Yud Kevavke. If you write the name Yud Kevavke, which is right here, except to have it as Hey Vav Yud Hey, if you write it in different formats with different punctuations on the bottom, there's 10 different versions of it, which I'm not going to show you right now. That's all you really need to know that there's 10 times the holy name of Yud Kevavke. And that spells out those, these 10 holy names. If you look at Yud K Vav K, the gematria is 26. 26 is always a good number, guys. 26 times 10, because there's 10 different ways of spelling out Yud K Vav K, that's 260. That's the gematria of 260. And they're also saying, hey, guess what? Ayin, I, that's 130. That's the gematria of 130. And then you have two eyes. Guess what that is? 260. So my eyes represent this concept of da'at. I think I just showed you now two different versions of it. Da'at, eyes. I woke up, I acknowledged what's going on here. That's knowledge. That's what eyes represent. And number two, it represents the concept of God's name times 10, which is equivalent to having two eyes, the concept of having knowledge of Hashem. And that's this idea that that's what everybody wants. We want this connection on the highest level of connection with Hashem. So that's what eyes represents in this Pasuk. Be'ne'emne, the faithful. Look at the second part of the Pasuk. Upon the faithful. The faithful, who is the faithful? It says here, Zebechinat Ahara. This corresponds, this is the aspect of Ahara. Kamabu midrash shocher tov. In the Midrash, Shocher Tov, it says, Be'aharon hu bechinat mishpat. Moshekatuv benasa haron et mishpat b'nei Yisrael. So what is the faithful? The faithful says, that, res- that corresponds to Aharon. Aharon corresponds to the concept of judgment. There's a Pesach they're bringing out from Exodus that said, Aharon bore the judgment of the children of Israel. So if we look at this pasuk, look at number 75. So it says here, the Midrash teaches, my eyes are upon the faithful. That's the pasuk we're using right now. That alludes to Aharon. God told Moshe to appoint a Kohen, but Moshe did not know from which tribe to choose this priest. So he says, choose from your own tribe, God said, for my eyes are upon the faithful. Well, if God's saying that his eyes are upon the faithful, right? We know if he's choosing from your tribe, he's looking at guess who? Aharon. Aharon as a pri- high, was a high priest. And that connotes also the aspect of judgment. He was the one who bore the judgment of Israel upon his heart. He wore the breastplate on himself that lit up, right? Through judgment, he elevated fear 
to its source, which is what we need to do. And by us elevating fear to its source, that's how we get da'at knowledge and connect knowledge, which is in Bina. Again, for the first people that are jumping up for the first time, don't stress out. This is just the ending of it. If you were with us throughout this whole roller coaster, you would understand it, but just giving you that heads up. So that's the concept of Aharon, the concept of judgment. Judgment being self-introspection about, about yourself and your actions. The puzzle continues and he says, Eretz, Zebechinat Irakana. So we learned that before, that Eretz Earth represents the concept of Earth. And so therefore, that's the concept. When you see the Earth, that represents the concept of fear. Fear and Earth are connected, as we've learned many times before. La Shebeni Madi should dwell with me, Zebechinat Sinai. This alludes to the concept of Sinai, Shiflut. What a Sinai represents? We've learned this before. Sinai represents the concept of humility. That's why Sinai was chosen as a mountain where God gave the Torah. He says, Eshkone Daka. He took a pasuk from Yeshayahu, and it says, I dwell with the humble. That's correct. Hashem only wants to hang out with those who are humble. Why? Because when you are nothing and Hashem is everything, Hashem appreciates that. He knows that. And that's how really you are able to receive the Torah without having any more of your ego involved in it. And that's the concept of humility. So that's why it says, should dwell with me. And that's what we learned that a person who has humility, that's just one more step closer in being able to receive the hidden light. La Shabbat Imadi, he that goes in the way, oh, sorry, it says here that we said La Shabbat Imadi, that's what we just said. Cholech Bederech Tamim, he goes in the way of perfection. Zebechinet Tfila, this is the aspect of prayer, of Tfila. Bechinat Abraham, the aspect of Abraham. How do we know that? Because there's a Pasuk in Breshi that says, Hashem says to Abraham, go before me and be perfect. So that's the concept of Abraham Avinu, right? And when did Hashem say that? He said that to Abraham Avinu when he circumcised himself. He circumcised himself, right? And that's the concept of perfection, of completeness. You finally did it. And this idea of Abraham Avinu, we spoke about this earlier also, he represents the concept of prayer, intense prayer. That was the idea. So when it says he goes in that way of perfection, perfection represents Abraham Avinu, which represents kindness. It also represents the concept of prayer. And finally, the last Pasuk, and with this, we're going to conclude this chapter. It says, Hu yesharteni, he will serve me. Zebechinat Sitra Yoraita. This alludes to the mysteries of the Torah. Zebechinat Hu, which corresponds to the word He. Bechinat Olam Haba, which is an aspect of the world to come. If we look at the Zohar, number 79, so it says here, you as a second person pronoun indicates familiarity and thus connotes the known and revealed Torah, right? So when he's saying you, right, it's like, I know you. Me and you, I know you very well, right? That's called reveal. Like, we know each other, right? Now, when it says he, like as in he did this, he, as a third person pronoun, this indicates the concept of remoteness that connotes you're far away from me. It's the mysteries of the hidden Torah. So when it says here, he will serve me, he represents far away. He represents hidden, the hidden mysteries of the Torah. So as you can see from this Pasuk from Tehillim, Rabbi Nachman just chopped it up and explained to you how all these different aspects of that we've learned in this chapter relates specifically to that. And uh, with that being said, that being said, uh, congratulations, guys. First of all, congratulations to all of you guys for finishing chapter 15 of Likute Baharan. And now we get to the, yeah, honestly, we should be blasting some music right now, pumping it up. Everybody should be dancing, but we're not because I don't want to waste any time. We just got to hit the ground running. So now what I'm going to do is um, the BRI, the Breast of Research Institute, they had sent me um, really, really almost not that long ago. Uh, there was, uh, I guess, a big storm going on in New York and the power was down. And they had sent me this long PDF with all the different chapters in Likutei Mahoran in English and Hebrew. Unfortunately, it's not chopped out properly. Not enough time to get through all this. What I'm going to do is go back to the same format that we were at before. 
And actually, before I start off sharing the screen, I just want to tell you a little introduction, what we're about to learn right now, guys. And this is, this is huge. So first of all, I want to tell you, normally, as, as you guys all have participated with me, we've been doing Likute Mahoran in order. We're going chapter by chapter by chapter. Um, over this past Shabbat, I walked inside of the synagogue, and I opened up a random chapter in Likute Mahoran. I love doing that sometimes. It speaks to me or something as a message I need to hear. And I opened up to chapter 251. And chapter 251 talks about something that I think many, many people go through. And what is that? When you have conflicts, when you have issues and disputes and machloket with other people. Okay? This is the big thing. Um, Okay, guys, so as we know from beforehand, not, let's, let's laugh about this. When a huge interruption like this is happening, once again, that's called the Yetzer Hara. They're trying to bring you down. They do not want this Torah to be out right now, guys. So again, we're, that means we're on the good side. We're on the right path. So basically, Rabbi Nachman's about to go into something fantastic. He's going to about to tell you what the story here is when you're in an argument, in a dispute, what you're supposed to do, and some interesting nuances that you, you'd be shocked to hear about. Um, and it's absolutely fascinating. So we're going to start off on chapter 251. If you do have the actual book, it's on page 249.48 in volume number, doo -doo -doo -doo, number six. Okay. But we're going to hit the ground running here online so everybody can go ahead and see this. And let's get ready to take a look at the amazingness that we're about to learn, guys. Hold on. 